bad news, folks. It's French. Life is too short to be drinking shit on here. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. Why the fuck am I doing this? I have no idea. <laughs> Fucking French beer. Jesus wept. Why the fuck? Anyway, <laughs> why am I doing this review? Well, I was mooching about the other day in Morrison's and I came across this in one of the fridges. It was 40p, can you see that price tag on there? I think that's fucking 40p too much myself, but there you go. Now, you normally only get these in like a crate, I think of 12, 12 little dumpies. I mean, everybody knows these type of beers. You used to do, and I mentioned this on the Lagodel review, that the, the big craze was back in the sort of 90s, I'll tell you a story about this in a minute. But in the 90s, you had what was called booze cruises. And it would basically be a load of Brits going over to France, stocking up on beer, usually shit beer like this, and tobacco, because it was cheap. And this was quite a common occurrence until the government realised that actually they were losing out a lot of revenue by people doing that, because people were going over there, fucking vans full of stuff, coming back, buying it in France because it was cheaper and bringing it back here. The government put a stop to it and they said, you've got a set amount now, you can only bring a certain amount back. I'm just looking at this glass, is it dirty? No, it's not. And uh, yeah, it sort of put the mockers on it really. It was a big thing in the 90s. Now, there's a little story for you. When the building trade went tits up and I started, well, I had to get a job. I was living in a flat in Walthamstow and I worked in a factory, in a rubber factory making car mats. And it was a real old school type of factory, if you can imagine that. And they used to have works out in every year. And there was quite a few of us saying, I would have been, how old would I have been then? I would have been about 27, 28, something like that. And it was a lot of geezers our age, all from Tottenham. This factory was in Tottenham. And uh, there's about, I'd say there's about eight geezers, including myself, we all decided to go on this works trip, right? And uh, they got a coach, and they were going to St. Omer. And this is what's reminding me of it, because this is brewed by Brasserie St. Omer. And we thought it was gonna be, we'd get out, do a little bit of sightseeing and all that, and basically go into a few pubs, get roaring drunk, and come back home. See the locals, abuse the locals or whatever. <laughs> Fucking hor horrible, that lot that worked there, myself included. but. It turned out they were doing a booze cruise, but they told everyone apart from us. So we've, we're thinking, are oh, we going to get out and go fucking sightseeing? What's in Saint Omer? Uh, there ain't a lot, to be honest. I think it was a German airfield during World War Two, and I think they used it during the Battle of Britain. And I think that's the, that's the only thing I remember about it because I did look it up before I went to see where we could go, and it wasn't a fucking great deal. But it's full of hypermarkets there, and this is where obviously stuff like this was being sold. But we went over on a coach and <laughs> we were playing poker on the way over and we was drinking on the way over and we were doing some illegal substances and I'm gonna leave it there, all right? I'm not gonna incriminate myself, but we were doing some illegal substances that probably would have got us put away now. And uh, yeah, we were, uh, we were very fucking drunk and pissed. And the coach driver threatened to throw us off in France and not let us back on. And <laughs> a couple of the other lads <laughs> didn't threaten him, but just had a little word in his shell like and said, uh, if you leave us here, you're gonna be staying here with us, <laughs> basically. So yeah, we got back and we started out really early. I think we started out at five o'clock. And I'll never forget, I was still drinking about one o'clock 
the next morning. We, it was like a whole day we just spent drinking. And I remember I ended up in a pub in Tottenham. The British Queen sadly gone now. But yeah, about one o'clock I was drinking. And I was thinking, this can't go on. This is going to fucking ruin me. But uh, that's my abiding memory of St. Omer. So why am I reviewing this? Well, as I say, it was 40p. And it, <laughs> you know my views on French beer. Now, you can argue the toss... And I'm not going to fucking argue because I haven't got a fucking dog in this race, but you can say the French do the best wine. Do they? I couldn't give a fuck. I don't like wine. I don't like anything about wine. The only thing it's good for is cooking. And I do take great delight in watching it boil up and all the alcohol burning off and you're adding a load more shit to it. And that's the nearest you'll get me to drinking any kind of wine. Don't get me wrong. It's lovely in a bolognese sauce. White wine is nice in a risotto. You can get like a a, a sort of a bitterness which is quite pleasant like a great bitterness off the, the finished product if you do it right and yeah I, I'm not going to deny that wine has got its place in cooking but that's as far as it fucking goes as for just drinking it nah I, I don't like it and you know if you want to drink wine then you know that's up to you but I'm not going to if you're a bloke and you drink wine I'm not going to judge you but I do class you with sort of scooter riders that you know what they say about scooter riders they they ride scooters to, so they can feel the wind in their vaginas. There you go. I'll probably piss a lot of people off here. If you drink wine, as I say, it's your concern. It ain't mine. You will not catch me drinking that shit. Satan's urine. Anyway, this stuff. Why am I doing this? I've had these before. And it probably wasn't this one, but it was it's something of that ilk. And they're fucking dog shit, basically. And I don't even know why I'm reviewing it, but... This, no, no, there is a reason why I'm doing it. It's, it's to highlight, I'm, I'm sure there must be some good brewers, breweries in France. For a country of that size, and I've been there fucking loads of times, but I've never come across a decent beer. The only decent beers they've got in France are the ones that they've imported. And the French beer, I mean, name me a decent French beer. I remember when I put the Lego Dale stuff up, that was fucking dog shit as well. Way too sweet, overloaded with sugar. Could have been nice. They tried to do a sort of an attempt on a Belgian blonde, but they just fucking went ballistic on the sugar and fucked it right up. Same brewery as this lot, Saint Omer. And Saint Omer was the largest independent brewer in France, so they're not being told. They used to be owned by Heineken. Heineken fucked them off. Oh <laughs> fuck! What the fuck were you doing to fuck just to get fucked off by Heineken? Yeah, you got to be doing something extremely fucking wrong. And tasting that Lagerdale, I can sort of half see why. But they're the largest independent brewer, so they've got no, how can I put it? They've got no overlords telling them what they've got to do. They've got no, nobody telling them to cut corners. They do over 30 or I think nearly 40 beers, this brewery do. And I've always said this, and I was having this rant the other day on, what's the little Welsh fella, his channel, Real Old Craft Beer. He was reviewing a brew dog, but don't get me fucking started on him fucking shit out of his. But, he was saying, oh yeah, Brewdog, it's, it's not a good beer. I was like, what do you expect? What do you expect? Have you seen how many beers Brewdog have brewed? How many different, different types, not types of beer, but different beers? Nearly, I would say, bordering, well, certainly over a thousand, possibly even 2,000 in their, what is it, 10, 12 year, 10 year? A thousand beers, over, well, a conservative estimate, I'll say 2,500. Um, I don't have the figures to hand, but if you look up on, is it Rate Beer? Have a look at the Brewdog Brewery page, and it's got like eight pages, uh, no, it's got 8,000 pages, and yeah, it's just filled up with the stuff that they brew. They'll do one batch, they'll do collaborations. And I've always said, if you look at the really good brewers, the world-class brewers, the range is quite small that they do. I mean, look at the Trappist stuff from Belgium. The Trappist brewers do not brew a lot of beer. I think the Trapp do the most and maybe the spencer stuff from america but tint meadow i had a bottle of tint meadow i should have done it actually but i uh i bought a bottle for a mate because he never tried it and he does know his beer and it was sitting in the fridge the other day and i thought oh, do you know what fuck it i'm gonna have it and i hadn't forgotten how good it was but it made me realize what a fucking great beer that is tint meadow if you've not tried it i urge you it's one of the best I would say best British beers around today. That's brewed by monks, Trappist monks. That is the only beer that they do. One beer, 
and they've got it fucking spot on. So good, in fact, that I would say it's arguably one of the best English style beers. I'd put it in the sort of old ale, bordering on barley wine, it's seven and a half percent. It's just brilliant, it's fantastic. If you like Fuller's Vintage Ale, now that really is a special beer, brewed once a year. If you've, you know, you buy one or two of them and it's gone, and you, you, you want your fix of that, get some Tint Meadow, it's on a par with that. That is how a good Tint Meadow is. They do one beer and they get it fucking right. They've perfected it and it is the perfect beer for me. It really is good. It's a little hefty, so you've got to take it easy, but contrast that with Brewdog. And you just think, hey, well, if you're gonna be brewing thousands, over a thousand beers, you're not gonna get it right. You're not gonna get consistency, c consistency, I should say. And yeah, and you look at all the others, West Mall, um, as I said, La Trappe, um, and some of the, even some of the German, the really good German brewers, Hackershaw, they do max 12, 13, maybe even 15 beers, and that's it. And they get them all spot on, and I'm including all the Rattlers and stuff they do as well. They get them spot on. Brewdog, it's like the, I don't know, the, the mad scientists, and they're brewing something, and then they'll just fucking fuck it off. But look at the core range for brew. I sh shouldn't be fucking going into a rant about Brewdog, but look at their core range. Punk IPA, passable, I will say. It's, it's just okay, it's nothing special. It really isn't, but that's their flagship beer. A nothing special flagship beer, in my opinion. Then you've got the Elvis juice. I used to like that when it came out. I don't know what the fuck they've done with it now. It's, it's fucking disgusting. And then you've got all the other stuff, like the Hazy Jane, and just fucking stupid things, like 65% beer. You fucking morons, what are you doing? I don't like them. I don't like the company. I don't like them two twats that run it. And I just don't like the, the fucking equity for punks. Don't get me started on that fucking Ponzi scheme. But yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of Brewdog. But it's the sort of philosophies that I've got about breweries. And yeah, although this lot aren't as extreme, they haven't got fucking thousands of beers. But yeah, you just think if, you, if you're brewing like 30 beers and you're still not getting it right, then yeah, you need to have a fucking a sit down, get a decent brewmaster in and just fucking go back to basics, brew six good beers, call it a day, leave it at that, perfect them, get them spot on. And you'll be fine. I mean, have these got their place, these little dumpy bottles? I mean, we've all drank them, you know, barbecues and all that, and they're cheap as well. I mean, I think, like I say, you normally get these in a, in a crate of 12. And I, I imagine, I've got this in Morrison's, in a, in a fridge in Morrison's, and I imagine one of the crates, is, one of the bottles is broken or something, and I just thought, fuck it, let's open it up and sell these off uh, singly. So that's what they've done. It's in a green bottle as well. So you've fucked up for, for starters. I'll get into even more shenanigans in the next section. Right, let's investigate this beer. Beer Continental, Continentale. I don't even know how it's pronounced. Beer de Flanders. Beer de Flanders. Why would you say that? It's Pas de Calais. What is this supposed to be? French lager, Beer de Flanders. Flanders is in Belgium. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, alarm bells. 2.8%, a lager that's 2.8%. Believe me, if you're brewing lager at 2.8%, then what is the fucking point? Uh, 25 centilitres or 250 mil. That's just, well, why would you do that? Ingredients, malt, malt, malt uh, barley malt, water, maize, and hop extract. Fucking alarm bell. So you've got 2.8%, it's French, it's got hop extract, which can be a good thing if it's decent hop oil, but no, in this lot, nah. It's got maize as well. There is no fucking excuse for putting maize into a beer when you come from France. Honestly, if you ever go out to France, the agricultural and arable land there is fucking vast. And you know, they, they fucked it up. Well, they fucked it up. <laughs> they've used it for wine. They've made vineyards. But yeah, stick to the fucking wine, you lot, because you cannot brew beer. And I haven't even tasted it yet, but I know it's going to be like, it's a green bowl, for fuck's sake. Why would you do that? Green fucking bowls. Oh my giddy aunt. Let's get it over and see what's going on. Well, I knew this was going to be a rent. There, the cap. White. Pure white. 
taken after battle flag of the French, no doubt. <laughs> I I'm only joking. There has been some very, very, very French, very, very famous French war heroes, I should say, and uh, they spend a lot on their military. Oh, look at that, unlike their fucking beers. Jesus, talk about insipid. Mmm. <sighs> that just smells cheap and nasty. There's a, a very, very, very vague skunkiness to it, which is surprising because I thought we would be skunk to fuck. It's not. You can you can sort of half smell that maize that's in there, and that's like a maize syrup. And uh, I was looking up malt, and maize is a legitimate malt. You could qualify; it does qualify as being a malt because you know it does half germinate, and it is fermentable as well. The the, the sugars that are in there, the yeast will feed on it. But yeah, I could. I, I, I will allow South American brewers to use maize because it's abundant there, maize and corn and stuff like that. But France, it, it just says cheapness. I mean, suppose at 40p, that's what you're going to get. What, what did you, what did I expect for 40p, for fuck's sake? I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what the, well, I know what I was fucking getting. Yeah, it just doesn't smell good. That smells nasty. Hardly any carbonation in that. Head is fucked off. Oh, wish me luck. Santé, as they say in France, I think. Is it, is it pronounced Sant or Santé? I don't know. Santé, I think it is. <laughs> oh, this ain't good at all. This is cold, it's coming out of the fridge. <laughs> Would you believe the carbonation on that is quite aggressive? There's hardly any fucking bubbles in it. I don't know what they've done to it. The flavours are just so insipid. It's wet, it's fizzy, and it's cold. There's a little bitterness to it. There's a horrible taste. I don't know what that is. I imagine it's the fucking... Either the dodgy hop extract or the, or the maize that's gone in here, but there's just absolutely no character to it whatsoever. The finish on it, it's just, <laughs> it's nothing. It's just no character to it. There's a little bit of nastiness in there and that's about it. So, oh, this, is, this is fucking rubbish, all right? For 40p, I don't feel cheated. If I'd paid any more than 40p, I'd have the arsehole, but can't really moan at 40p, can you? Um, if there's any more, I will buy it because I'll throw, I'll boil my sausages up in this before I fry them. And I do recommend you to do that if, you, if you're making sausages and you've got some shit beer that you're not going to drink or it's gone out of date, boil your sausages up in them. Does It cooks them to the, from the inside, gives it a little bit of a sweet flavour. Then you put it on the grill or the, or the pan, brown them up, crisp them up and all that. They taste fucking handsome with some, some peas and some mash, some decent mash. But this is all this is good for, boiling sausages. Because fucking no way is this a decent beer. I don't smell, it's like a, I don't know, it's just, it just doesn't smell good. It's just not nice. And it's not skunky either, it's, it's like lacquer, if you can imagine that. Now it shouldn't do, because there's no, there's hardly any ethanol in this, it's 2.8%. But, it's like a horrible, it's a mix between, I don't know, like stale bread and, Fucking nail varnish remover. 
<laughs> fucking hell. Well done, France. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna take one more mouthful of it, because this is fucking torture. Oh, it's fucking dog shit. Utter and complete fucking dog shit. France, stick to making wine and let whoever buys wine buy that. Give up on the beer because you lot are not fucking qualified. So what is the verdict on beer continentale? I think that's how it's pronounced. French lager, Bière de Flanders. This is not, this is from the Par de Calais region. saint Mers Par, Par de Calais. And they're calling it Bière de Flanders French Lager. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get anything about this beer. 2.8%. Who the fuck drinks 2.8% beer? Who drinks fucking lager in a green bottle? Who drinks 250 millilitres of fucking piss? Uh, answer. Moi. <laughs> it's fucking rubbish. Don't bother. If you see these dumpies, I think they're all, as the Americans would say, they are a dime a dozen. Uh, they might be cheap, and there's a reason they're cheap. You get what you pay for. It ain't good. It's a fucking insult. This is, this is for people who don't like beer, or who don't know anything about beer. Now, I'm not knocking people who don't know much about beer, and they'll buy these thinking they've... I mean, we all done it. I didn't do it personally, but all these people getting the getting the beer over from France in the, on the booze cruises and all that. This is the kind of shit that was bringing over. Now, if it was Germany on the other hand, fucking hell, I'd be going over there in, a, in an HGV. But phew, France, I fucking despair. Your cuisine may be half decent. Your wine, if people like that, it may be okay. But your fucking beer is rubbish. It really is. I mean, this is gonna be my challenge now. I'm gonna try and find a decent beer from France. And I'm sure if any of you subscribers out there, please leave a comment. And if you can recommend a decent one, and I don't just mean like fucking Cronenberg or anything like that, because Cronenberg is fucking dog shit. My nephew drinks that. That boy needs, he needs some German discipline. Uh, but this stuff, fuck it off. Uh, one out of 10. Um, if there's a, I'll tell you what, if you want to boil your sausages up, if 40p, then you may be lucky. But pff, as for drinking it, bollocks. This is fucking right. I wouldn't even drink this at a barbecue. If it was, I, it would have to be as cold as liquid nitrogen to have any flavor. And even then it probably wouldn't. Nah, I'm not interested in this. It's fucking rubbish. That's going down the sink. And French beer, take it from me, is fucking bad. And remember, I'm drinking this shit so you don't have to. <laughs>